we're about ready to get started. Um, so if the candidates want to go ahead and come up and take a seat, please. Um, my name is Pam Lowe, and I am the president of the Sykeston Community Teachers Association. Um, we want to thank you for coming to our board candidate forum today. Um, we also want to take just a minute to thank um, all of those who are running. We appreciate your um, willingness to take on this task and to serve. Um, and so this is just, everyone should have picked up a little bit of bio information um, when you came in. That's just kind of to help save us some time um, because we really don't want to run over an hour. Um, our MC um, for today is Mr. Glenn Cantrell. He has been uh, very good um, to do this for us every year and we really appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Glenn. I'm the last one on the list they call, that's why I'm here every year. <laughs> well, first off, welcome to today's forum. Uh, the point of today is to uh, better inform the voters of the Sykeston area. Dan, you can have a seat, you don't have to stand the entire time. They're very calm, cool, and collected and ready to go this afternoon. So here's how things will work. We will begin with a question uh, with Kyle. Uh, we'll be going uh, in alphabetical order. And so uh, Kyle will receive the first question, and then after that we'll go in alphabetical order. Chad will receive the first question next, and so on and so forth, until we get to the very end. As you can see, we have seven candidates this year, and so we're going to push through for an hour. That's the uh, goal, I think. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to try to reach that goal this afternoon. So let's just go ahead and get started with our very first question this afternoon. And again, we'll begin with Kyle Alcorn. Kyle, tell us what motivated you to run for the school board, and how would you describe your job uh, as a member of the Board of Education if you're elected? Thanks, Glenn. Uh, what motivated me to run uh, most, mostly was I have three school-age children. Uh, I'm very involved in, in what they're doing and, and their learning experience. Also, as a lifelong resident of Sykes and very involved in the community, uh, want the community to be successful. I see uh, education as being one of those foundations. Uh, and I thought that I could offer, and it's time to offer back to the community, some of the things that I've learned uh, being a part of this community and the investment that I want to make in our kids and the community uh, would make me a successful candidate. That's why I chose to run. Okay. Next up, and this is a first for me and probably for most everyone here, we're going to Skype, where Chad Bleas is joining us from far, far away. Uh, Chad, the same question to you. What motivated you to run for the school board, and how would you describe your job as a member if you're elected? Uh, that, that's really my help here. The thing that has motivated me to run is I have five children. Is that cutting now? Okay, uh, I have five children in the district. I am a pastor, community leader in our community. Uh, there's lots of things I think that are positive for school district. Uh, I think one of the things that I bring to uh, this this uh, experience, running both budgets, being steward of resources. Uh, I think another thing that motivates me really fun is to hear a voice of reason. Um, I think I'm good this and choosing relationship missions that uh, moving us into a place of unity in our community. Okay, thank you, Chad. And I don't know if y'all are doing this or not, but you may want to mute the microphone on the computer uh, so that it's not picking up the noise from, from the room. Uh, next up with the question is uh, Aaron Boyce. Hi, my name is Aaron Boyce. I'm running for school board because I care deeply about the town of Sykeston. Uh, a lifelong resident of the town. Um, Sykeston is kind of at a crossroads. Um, we're at a place in time where we could go either way. Uh, and as Kyle mentioned, uh, a strong school system goes a long way in the success of the community along with a successful hospital. Um, we have that, we have a successful school system. Um, I think that uh, we, we do have our issues. We have older facilities. We have uh, test scores that we need to work on. We have uh, budget items that need to be addressed. Um, I'm qualified because 
I work with budgets on a daily basis, and I have for the last nine years. Uh, so I have a financial background. Um, I'm invested in the children. I don't have a singular agenda uh, than anybody else does, but I certainly don't. I'm willing to work with all students to ensure success for everybody. Um, it's just something that I've always wanted to do, and now is a good time for me to do it. All right, and just a reminder to the candidates, and I know some of you aren't used to speaking in public, but the microphone a little closer to your mouth will help the people in the back break, okay? All right, next up with our uh, question is John Graham. Good evening, and I thank you all for coming out. I am interested in the school system because this is the school I graduated from. I spent all my years in school coming here, and what I have seen as a whole out of the people here we had a forum uh, a few weeks ago, and it was wonderful because people out in the public got to ask questions, and that was helpful for us as a group to hear. Now, we talked about, or they talked about different issues, um, school facilities, we've talked about uh, different things that mean a lot to all of us or we wouldn't be here. Um, being a grandfather and, and, and have already raised my son and, and have grandchildren and great grandkids, and now, I mean, I great grandkids, but great nieces and nephews. Um, that's my interest in this school system because our future is our kids. And the future of this town is our children. And education is the number one thing that's a catalyst for our kids to have a better life. And I think we need to focus on that and whatever it means, if it's new school facilities, different curriculum, whatever that needs, that board has to be ready and willing and able to save what's on their hearts and minds, and, and we agree on not having agendas, because the main thing is is the kids, and that's what we're all about up here on the platform. Thank you. Okay. Next up, Stephanie Poindexter. Can you repeat the question, please? Sure, absolutely. What motivated you to run for the school board, and how would you describe your job as a member of the school board if you're elected? The reason that I'm running for school board is uh, my three main reasons are my children. Uh, I have a daughter, uh, she's a senior in high school, Morgan Poindexter. Um, Georgia Poindexter is a junior in high school, and I have Heath Allen Poindexter in sixth grade, sixth grade at the fifth and sixth grade center. Um, I've gotten involved, I've been involved with them as far as uh, in their school work and everything. I've been involved, tried to be involved in what's going on in our school system. Um, I'm not from here, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. I was, was where I was born. Um, and then I moved to Kennett. Um, and I moved here because of my husband's job. He was transferred with UPS and we moved here um, without any children at the time. So um, the, the um, situation of the school was not important to me when I came here, but as I've had my children and raised them in the public school, it's become very important to me. Um, my job that I see as a board member would be to gather information from the community, um, to listen to what people have to say in the community about what's going on concerning curriculum, bond issue, um, anything that's going on in our school system and when people have opinions we need to listen to them and i want to be a voice for our our society or for our community um, i want to be a voice for our teachers we have some awesome teachers here at sykeston um, my kids have had some great experiences and um, i just want to be a voice for those who can't speak thank you Next up, Alicia Wilder. Good afternoon. Thanks, everyone, for coming out. My motivation for running for school board is my deep concern about the direction I've seen some of our youth going lately. As a clerk at the court window, I've seen some of the repercussions of people falling through the cracks. I know that teachers and parents, the community, we're all doing our best, and I just want to be, I want to help contribute to the success of the kids. Um, what I feel would be my responsibilities on the board, 
I want to open channels of communication between the parents, the faculty, and the board. Everyone needs to find out what they need from the other so we can help implement some policies to work on the success for our kids, work on professional goals for the faculty. Just everyone needs to take a piece of responsibility toward the success for the kids. I don't even have kids in school, so this is purely volunteerism for me. I am just that concerned and motivated to do well for you all. Thank you. And finally, with our first question, Amethia Williams. Hello. What motivated me to run for our school board is, first of all, because as a parent, you know, it's important to be there for our children and to have a voice in our community and for our children. And um, first of all, I noticed that um, <clears throat> our children, they're, they're facing some things. And you know, I, get, I, I look at parents and I was thinking like, you know, we ought to be concerned for our children. And I said, um, as a person, I'm concerned for my children because I have special needs children. So I've always had, I have three premature babies. One one pound, one one pound, one two pound. And so I've always had to be there for my children. And I have a compassion for the children in our community because I believe that they are our future. So as a school board member, I know that we have a great responsibility. And I'm willing to subject myself to that responsibility because I know how important it is for our children to get what they need. And um, I decided, you know, what better person than me to run? And I've had several people to ask me, just when I explain to them my passion for our children, I explain to them that I believe they're our future, and I believe that they can do anything. But I believe that there should be people in place as board members and um, representatives for the children that speak on behalf of the children, of the students in the school. And so, as a person, as a board member myself, I believe that I will be a good person for our children. I will have an open heart and a willing mind. I'm, yeah. And just do whatever it is that I need to do and uh, to make sure that they succeed because that's what's important. You know, our curriculum is important. The bond issue is important. Having a nice place for our children and things of that nature. So I know that uh, I will be a good representative. Thank you. All right. In case I didn't mention, each candidate has two minutes, and so we're going to make sure the candidates stay uh, on time so that all candidates can answer the questions. Uh, now we go back out to California. First, or the next question goes to Chad first. Chad, what qualifications do you possess that will enhance the education of the students at Sykeston Public School? I think, uh, for me, going back to the previous question, it's you know, the responsibility that we have kids um, as far as a board is to set policy to ensure that policy is followed and give guidance to sorry I muted um, so the experience that I have um, that is going to be beneficial is actually having the opportunity to serve on boards understand how boards function and uh, the role that we play I currently serve on the board for day off it's to understand the, uh, the needs of Children, um, all the way from preschool, high school, understanding you know the, the role that the board plays in that. Uh, also, uh, I, I've served organizations where I submit to the board, and so understanding uh, both the directions of that. Uh, I think also the other experience that I have, obviously, with uh, with with kiddos, um, serving in our meeting, working hands on with kids, uh, everything from ministry camps to to a little league, I think another I think that would be experience that would be beneficial is the ability to navigate healthy community relationships, to navigate uh, controversy and conversation in a way that at the end of the day uh, values people, with respect, and uh, and we still remain friends and neighbors. Okay, thank you, Chad. Next uh, up would be Eric. I think my, my biggest qualification, or the one I like to hang my hat on, is my ability to work well with others in a team atmosphere. Um, I'm not afraid to fight for what I think is right. I also know when to pick my battles. Um, 
I can, I'll be able to identify if something is really, really important to a fellow board member, um, and if I'm in a disagreement with them, um, you know, I think that being a, being a level-headed, uh, kind of in the middle type fella, I would be good at, at meshing the group together and to come up with the best solution possible. Um, also, alluding back to the, the budget work that I've done, I work with vendors every day. Um, saving money is, is what I do. Saving money for the school system is something that I will take very seriously. Um, everybody knows how expensive uh, things are these days. Textbooks, meals, trash cans, chairs. Uh, you have to be smart when you're buying. You have to make sure that the deal and the contract that you are getting, that you're working with, benefits you. Um, those are a few of my qualifications. Okay. John? Well, I, I believe that my qualifications are life experiences, being on the city council and helping manage and budget the city, uh, expenditures, issues with personnel, and understanding that it takes time and effort. I always say I'm a researchaholic. If I don't know the answer to something, I always research it till I do, and I will never vote on anything unless I am 100% certain that I've researched all the information. And it doesn't really matter in what category it is, be it cheers or, or, or buildings or that type of thing. I, I believe that from your heart, you have to know inside that you're doing the right thing, and I am that kind of person. Uh, I, I will never go against what I believe is right. And, uh, whatever the situation might be. I think in, in a budgeting aspect of things, there are a lot of things that need to be looked at and a lot of things that could be expanded upon. And I am the kind of person that will listen to everybody. I've worked with, with large organizations. We've been president of quite a few of them. And so I have a lot of experience in dealing with that kind of thing. And I believe that I would be an excellent board member. And I thank you. Stay seated. Um, I feel that what I bring to the table is, um, for my qualifications, I'm a, I'm a strong Christian woman uh, with strong values. I believe in education. I think we should be educated very well. We should get the best education that is, is available to us. Um, I'm hardworking. I, uh, put whatever it takes into what I do. I'm a perfectionist. Um, I listen, I'm honest, I'm loyal. I care about this community. I care about the school system. I care about all the people involved in it. Um, Bishop? My qualifications for running for school board, I have over 30 years of customer service experience and you as teachers, faculty, parents, taxpayers, you are my customers, I am accountable to you. Okay, Nithya. My qualifications for running for school board is first of all, I'm a people person. I'm a person with compassion for our uh, children, for our people, period. You know, I'm a team player. I have a, a psychology degree. I research. Research is my thing, you know. I'm able to make decisions and stand on what I do. Um, budget. I'm a good budgeter now. Wasn't always, but I'm really good, good at budgeting. And I just feel like, you know, from my values that I have for our children and for people and being concerned and compassionate, I know that I'll be a good candidate. Thank you. Our next question will first go to Aaron. Kyle. Oh, sorry, Kyle. Okay. <laughs> um, my qualifications, I believe, is I'm very invested, as I mentioned before in the opening. Uh, the other is I've served on several committees and uh, feel that I understand, I listen well, I get along with folks, and come to reasonable decisions. And I try to educate myself before we make decisions. Uh, in my career, I worked in... Uh, you know, business for over 20 years, 
in management roles and training roles, communication roles. So I looked up actually some of the qualifications or what school board members do on the site. And, uh, you know, those are some of the things implementing policy, managing and administrating, managing budgets. I've uh, done budgets uh, like Aaron for 15, 16, 17 years. So I feel those qualifications and the personal best interest and the interest in the community and all the students that attend school here is why I'm qualified. Okay. Now, Aaron. Now, what do you know about the Missouri learning standards? And can you share your views on growth and proficiency as they apply to our district? The Missouri Learning Standards are a group of standards uh, passed down by the state of Missouri that is, is more or less a roadmap for, uh, on a grade by grade basis, for what students should be able to accomplish or, or do at the end of the school year. Um, Specifically, you know, I, I, don't, I can't dive that deep into it, but that's what they are, or that's my understanding of them. Um, they, they are also, they have, a, they have a program, they have an initiative, uh, I believe it's top 10 in 2020, I think, where they are trying to get the state of Missouri in the top 10 in the country in overall education test scores. Um, what was the second part? Second part of the question, can you share your views on growth and proficiency as they apply to our districts? Growth? Yeah, so, so growth is a problem. Uh, enrollment is, is declining steady, uh, steadily. Um, you know, I think, I think new, new facilities are gonna attract people. Um, we, I know of specific examples of uh, physicians, for instance, that have come to town liked it, but we're crazy about the schools. Um, and, and that's a hard pill to swallow. And I think a lot of people in this room understand that. Um, you know, I think that's gonna help with growth. Uh, even one new facility will help with growth. Um, you know, that, that to me is, is key. Okay. John. No, it's you, John. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, the learning standards, um, I reviewed those. Um, Desi has some pretty good information about that. Um, the thing that a lot of people look at are, as far as the learning standards go, a few years ago there was issues brought up about Common Core. And according to the state website, the state standards are also the same as Common Core. And so, some people have some friction about that and knocking on doors. I've had people ask me those questions. And I leave that up to you all that make the decisions to present those. This is only says that they are about, these are uh, guidelines. They're not what they mandate. So I think as a school board, we need to look at everything. And like he says, we need to get our school to where it's in a better condition than what it is. And we all know the, the decline in, in, in the student population, each board member meeting that I've been to, we've kind of gone down, whether the people moving or not. But the main thing is, the teachers that, that Sykes and have are awesome, and they do the very best they can. And I think if we could look at the curriculum and maybe help them a little more to where the students can learn a little better, perhaps, have a little bit better uh, opportunity for, for different guidance, I think would be something that we really ought to consider. Um, and that's just my little two cents worth on that. But really, if we, if we consider what the standards are, they're trying to uniformly get it across our state to where all of the education possibilities are, are on the <coughs> even playing field. I talked to a friend of mine today that's up by St. Charles, and, and their school has a rating of a 10. And, and I was quite amazed, so I wasn't talking with him and I'm running out of time. But that is something that I would like to see our school be on top of. Thank you, John. Stephanie? Like Aaron said, the Missouri Learning Standards standards are a set of standards that are based on each grade of what um, a child should learn in first through 12th grade. 
um, at the end of the year, they should have accomplished those um, standards that are set. Um, they are the standards, they are not the curriculum. Um, the standards are set, or Missouri uses the Missouri Standard Learn, I'm sorry, the standard learning. I'm sorry, let me just tell you one thing. I am not a public speaker. <laughs> that is my main problem that's working against me right now. Um, my nerves are a mess. But anyway, uh, as far as the standards and how they're set for the grades, um, and then I guess those are used and a school is rated. Um, as John had mentioned about the ratings, I was looking at ratings today and was looking at us compared to like Poplar Bluff, um, Jackson, Cape, and like the overall district, they rate each school, each school has a rating, but they also rate the district as a whole. And it's on a one to 10 basis, um, with 10 being the, the highest that you can get. And, um, Sykeston Public Schools is a three. Um, Cape is a five. And Poplar Bluff is a five. And Jackson is a seven. Um, that is the main, main thing that I'm concerned about is, is our ratings. I know that the bond issue is a big deal. I know that um, it would be nice to have beautiful school buildings for our kids and our teachers Sorry, and our staff. Time's up. Apologize. Bishop? To add to what everyone else was saying, yes, we need to work with our curriculum specialists to find out what best suits and fits our kids' needs and abilities. We need to get input from the parents because they're the ones who are seeing how their kids are performing and behaving at home when dealing with the curriculum. Like um, Kevin. Like the others, I do believe we should have one full looking schools. We should have all the uh, scientific and technical links and Skyping for, you know, people who need to learn at home maybe. Um, I am a little bit concerned that we're focusing on the aesthetics more than we are focusing on actual the education. And I believe that working together, we can figure out how to get a balance between the education side, the new school side, what the kids need most of all. And I believe that once we get to the point where the kids, the students, can reach the maximum, the level of their maximum achievement, that will draw in new residents, that will draw in new industry, we'll get our tax base broadened, and yes, we can have these schools that we see on TV and the ones that have all the, the smart rooms and the smart blackboards, or excuse me, smart whiteboards now. And we should be able to have all these things for our kids. We should be able to grow and attract new citizens that way. Thank you. Amethia. Um, yes, the, the standards are a list of um, information to sit down to the schools to use as a guideline, but it's important as a school for the board to decide what's best for your children in your district. You know, just because they send it down don't we mean we have to adopt everything. We have to make sure that we're on within those guidelines, but it's important for us to make sure that what we're adopting, that it works for our children so that our rates will go up. As she said, our rate in Sykeston is a three. So it's important for us to, in making those decisions when we're looking at those guidelines, is we need to make decisions that's best, like I said, for our children. Yes, I believe that, um, you know, curriculum is important. And I believe that our children deserve an opportunity to learn about the common core math, but I don't think that it should be our sole math. I think that it's important for us to make decisions to make sure that our students have the traditional math also so that they can be prepared for the real world. I do think that it's important that we build good new schools for our children, but I think that our focus should also be on what's best for our children, and that's making sure that they 
uh, get what they need to um, move up in, in their ranking. So it's a lot of things that uh, we need to do, but um, we should also um, just focus on what's best for our children. That's, that's my main goal. Thank you. Thank you, Nipia. Kyle. So uh, the Missouri Learning Standards, as I understand it, are standards that are set by Missourians and were developed uh, by teachers and administrators uh, and legislators. Uh, one thing, though, that we do have input in, and we have to teach to these standards, but one thing that we do have input locally is in the curriculum. And I think a lot of the teachers and even retired teachers are involved in that curriculum. So I do like the fact that we, we can involve and instill some of the things locally, like you were talking about, that uh, to, to uh, teach to those standards. Um, so that, you know, that being said, uh, I also believe that we have to provide the right environment for, for students, uh, to why the bond issue as well. But we do need to pay attention to those scores. If, if we're a three, we gotta be better than that. And we've gotta do the things to push forward look at uh, what we're doing and, and teach to those standards. Okay, and now back to Chad. Um, the Missouri Learning Standards actually are a continuation of uh, standards that were introduced in 1996, uh, the showing standards. The truth and the reality is we've always had standards, probably will always have standards, standards will come and standards will go, uh, but we have to look at them as a roadmap. And uh, it's not telling us what strategy we've got to use. It's not telling us how to build the curriculum. It's not telling us what text to use. But standards are, are beneficial because they're evidence-based. Uh, we get to see the process of moving our children from one point to another. Um, the standards have grade level expectation, at the end of course expectations. And then there's assessments that we see. Are we accomplishing what we set out to accomplish? Um, and, and again, I think, you know, we all hear of federal mandates, state mandates, and all those things. And uh, I don't think that's going away anytime soon. But I think what we have to do at the local level is trust the professionals. And that are the teachers in the classroom. Um, the board's job is, is not to write curriculum. The board's job is to approve curriculum and, and not to micromanage curriculum, but to trust the professionals in the classroom. Um, there, is, there is no influence of the standard that says they have to teach it a, a certain particular way. Uh, but again, it's to, again, to help us measure outcomes. And like all the other candidates said, of course, we want to be uh, best. But to do that, I don't think we abandon uh, standards altogether. Okay. Thank you, Chad. Next question, first up will be John. What are your thoughts about the current bond issue regarding the building phases, and do you support the bond issue? Could you repeat it one more time? Sure. So what are your thoughts about the current bond issue regarding the building phases, and do you support the bond issue? Well, in the, in, in the, in the first part of it, uh, the bond issue is something that's came up a lot to me when I've been knocking on doors and asking people for their vote. And, and the bond issue, as I've spoken with the superintendent before, when I was on the council, I suggested that you pursue one building at a time and allow people to digest that and approve that. Because there's nobody in this town that wouldn't want something better for our school, want a new building, um, and we all know the deficiencies in those areas. My, my concern is uh, primarily in presentation of this particular project, because when you start talking about phase one and phase two and phase three and so on, that scares a lot of people. And, and the reality is, I, I think that everybody has, has a goal inside to make our school the best that it can possibly be. And I'm about making it the best that it can possibly be. And I think that we all should look at what we actually need. And we, we've talked about building a new school and I've, I've seen all the proposals and they appear to be excellent. My, my concern is, community-wide, are they gonna support it? And I think a, a better presentation would have been better to get it passed. 
and, and I have a lot of people that tell me yes, and I have a lot of people tell me no. And as far as ever saying my vote, I don't do that because that's why we cast the ballot. My, my feelings I've expressed in the fact that I believe that we need to have the very best that we possibly can have, and I think the voters will decide that, but I think next time around we really ought to consider a little bit different proposal as far as presentation goes. Stephanie. Will you repeat the question? Sure. What are your thoughts about the current bond issue regarding the building phases, and do you support the bond issue? Just say I do not support the bond issue. Um, the reason that I don't, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the community of Sykeston. Sykeston is not growing. Um, what uh, at, in looking at numbers in in Sykeston, the median income of a household in Sykeston, and that being if you lined up every household in Sykeston um, from least amount to greatest amount, the amount that's in the very middle, is $37,000. 60% of Sykeston um, individuals or people, households, earn less than $50,000 a year. Um, we have in New Madrid County, when you go to Walmart and, and shop, you're paying a sales tax rate of 9.225%. Um, in Scott County, it's 8.225%. I know years ago when I would go over to Tennessee and you go and go shopping or whatever, um, when you go to check out, Tennessee has a sales tax rate of 10%. The state of Tennessee does not have an income tax. We have an income tax. We have a high sales tax rate, almost 10%. And um, we have people who are struggling in this town. Um, and I'm concerned for them. I know just with where I work, I see people working paycheck to paycheck. And I just think we need some relief. This is the year from the Math and Science Building being built, that bond issue, this is the year that we would get some relief with our property taxes. They would be going down if this bond issue does not pass. Okay, Bishop. Need to repeat the question? Okay. Yes, thank you. Sure. What are your thoughts about the current bond issue regarding the building phases, and do you support the bond issue? Um, my thoughts regarding the bond issue, I'm kind of like John. I would love for our school, for us to have new elementary schools to improve the existing schools we have with the monies we have on hand. However, I am very concerned about the packaging for phases one through five. This bond only addresses phase one. I see phases two through five potentially meaning new um, school bond issues on the ballot, thus meaning higher taxes in the very near future. Um, until that can be better addressed for me, I have to say, personally, my feelings toward the bond, I am against it, but I think if there were time to repackage what's being offered, I would be completely for it. But my opinion really doesn't matter. That's something for the voters to decide. Any appeal? I support the bond issue. I believe that our children uh, deserve better and safer schools. I have children that's come through the high school, and I see the shape that the building is in. But I would say that, um, first of all, they need to properly prioritize, find out what needs to be done first, and do those. But I do support the bond issue. Thank you. Thank you. Todd. Um, as I said before, I do support the bond issue. Um, I think it is critical for our community and our schools that we show progress uh, you know, on the south side of town with some of the business development that's happened. There's been over $40 million in commercial development in 2015. And we're at a crossroads where this community is growing and as Aaron brought up about recruiting people to come to the community. Uh, we need to have some of the best things in education. I believe we have the best teachers and some of the best teachers in the area. We need to provide the facilities 
ensure that we provide safe facilities as well and a great learning environment for, for our students. So I'm in favor of the bond. If I could vote twice, I'd vote for it twice. So I would encourage you, if you don't vote for me, vote for the bond. All right, thank you, Kyle. Chad. Um, I am absolutely yes in favor of the bond. And uh, I think the current board has done a great job of listening and going back to our, our constituents, um, talking with our taxpayers and voters and uh, trying to figure out the best pace at which to move and to progress our, our schools forward. Um, you know, I think 21 cents uh, levy compared to others around us, upward of 67 cents um, is pretty reasonable. Um, you know, I, I think we have to be mindful that um, each phase will not move forward without the approval of, of the vote of our, of our community. And so um, I also truly believe that, that we put our money um, where we have value and we buy and we spend and we do the things that are valuable and important to us. I would venture to say many people in that room right there today have a cell phone. Um, they take care of what's important to them. And I don't think we can say we value our kids if we're not providing safe, uh, environments for their learning, um, taking care of the, the growth and things that are there. Um, I, I, again, think one of the, the responsibilities for us, too, as a board is if we set a bond issue, if our voters approve it, it's an $11 million budget. That's it. That's what we have. Nothing more, nothing less. And we have to steward that. And we have to hear what our, our constituents say and um, wait for phase two. I, I think we... Again, we have to pace ourselves for our communities comfortable with. Okay, thank you, Chad. Aaron. I am 100% behind the, the bond issue, um, and I would be most likely, I mean, I'm sure the, the, the people that are up here tonight, that three of us are gonna get elected. Uh, we're gonna be involved in the second phase of this, and uh, you know, I can promise you that we will take you know, every avenue we will explore every uh, every every cost, every uh, benefit to a new school. Um, you know, like I alluded to earlier, schools are the backbone. Hospitals are the backbone. The hospital recently, or is just about to complete a seven million dollar privately funded uh, uh, emergency room, and that's going to do wonders for the community. Think what a school on the south end of town could do. Think what another school in the middle of town could do. Think of what uh, revamping this, this facility that we're in today would do. It just makes a difference. Um, we talked earlier about Cape and Bluff and Jackson having higher test scores. What's the common denominator with Cape, Bluff, and Jackson? New schools. I'm not saying it's the silver bullet, but when I get dressed up like I am tonight, I feel good about myself. When a kid walks into a new facility that's shiny, he's gonna have pride in that facility and he's gonna try harder. In my mind, I went, I was uh, the first class to go through the newest school, junior high, which is what, 27 years old? I was the first, we were steps when it was sixth and seventh grade, and I remember feeling this is really neat. Uh, my dad's name is up on the wall, he was a board member at the time. I took great pride in that. I want to do that for my kids. All right, thank you, Aaron. Actually, my class was the last class to fully go to the old middle school. <laughs> Not that I'm bitter, <laughs> but I would like to know why no one put stairs in the new middle school. All right, Stephanie has the next question. Stephanie, the next question is, what is your stance on charter schools? I don't know a whole lot about charter schools. Um, I know that uh, as far as it, I know that when they look at areas, I've been told recently that it, um, they're more likely to choose a school that's performing low to maybe move a charter school into that area. Um, 
So I'm sorry, I do not know much about charter schools. Okay, thank you. Alicia? I spent most of my adult life living in the Chicagoland area and school choice and charter schools were always big issues there. Um, part of my career, I spent a little while working at a charter school office and I saw test scores. Apparently, some charter schools work very well, some really do not work well. Um, I don't see really that there is a impact of charter schools here in Sykeston or even around here because there is school choice is not quite an issue with us. We've got public schools, we have our parochial schools. So that's pretty much all I know about charter schools. I am familiar with charter schools and I feel like they have their advantages and disadvantages. What charter schools are is just an opportunity for your children to be sent from this school, from your area to a school or from another school to a different school. Uh, I'm not really a, uh, a supporter of charter schools. I believe in having my children right here in the community where I can be involved with my children's uh, in my school. Thank you. Okay. Kyle. Uh, I'm not as familiar with charter schools as well, to be honest with you, but uh, I do believe that, uh, you know, the, the schools and learning that uh, parents ought to have the uh, opportunity to send their, their kids to, uh, to the best possible education that's, that's available in the district. Chad? Um, in fact, there's actually a charter school bill um, that's being considered here in Missouri. Uh, charter schools are an alternative for parents who, you know, their children belong to a uh, school district that has a failing school. They have an opportunity to send their kid to a charter school um, using their tax money in that location opposed to, um, you know, the local district with a failing school. Um, as I understand charter schools currently, um, a school district, let's say they come to Sykes and want to begin a charter school, they actually have 60 days. A school district can take sponsorship of that new charter school. Um, if the school district declines within that 60 days, then it could be a university or a private institution. Um, the new bill that's actually in the state legislature right now, um, rather than 100% of that child's tax, um, you know, tax, education tax fund going to that charter school, um, they would only receive 90% of it and 10% of it would actually stay at the local school district even with the failing uh, school. So um, I'm not a, necessarily a fan of, I, I think the, the better investment for us is to, to do a great job in our school district. Um, I, I think that's where we head. Don't fear charter schools, um, but I think it would do as well to understand what they are and uh, how we might navigate them should they ever come to our community. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> I would be against charter schools. Uh, I think in a town like Sykeston, a charter school would not be good. Um, like Chad said, I think we need to focus uh, on on making our schools schools better. Uh, that opens up the vouchers and the you know the you know if your kid doesn't go to public school, then you don't have to pay taxes. Uh, you put that money toward the, the charter school, but uh, I would. Speak simply against the charter school. Finally, John. <coughs> charter schools came about because of, of, of failing issues in, in some school areas. Uh, if you want to know who's really versed in that, that's Tyler Hubert. She's the representative that lives over in Dexter. She did a lot of work and research and putting into this. And Chad was right, 90% of the money would go to that charter school, 10% would stay in the school that, that's supposed to be teaching. So our biggest concern, and my biggest concern, is about getting our education scores up and getting our kids up in a better position so we don't ever have to cross that position looking for why are we failing, why are we declining? We need to get that education up. Our ratings have to come up or we can count on charter schools coming in. I am not for them. I am for public school. I think I got an excellent education here. And I have no qualms about saying that education in a public school is awesome. 
but when charter schools come about, it's because of declining scores in a public school where parents get disappointed, disgusted, and, and very much hurt. And what that's going to ultimately do is hurt our school. If it happens, we're going to lose 90% of the funding per child. So if we look at that, we need to get our scores up. We need to work on that before we really attack anything. And we need to work on that. And I know the teachers are doing really hard, and I don't know the answer to that. But the board has to look and focus on that so we can get the education numbers up. Because we will be looking at charter schools if we don't, and I'm not for them. So. Thank you, John. Our next question goes to Leisha. The question is, what is your understanding of and position on teacher tenure? My understanding of teacher tenure, I hope I would someone could correct me when I go wrong here. Um, after a certain amount of service to the schools, you are more or less protected in your job. However, I do believe that teachers should be protected in their job when they do a good job. And I believe that merit should be the number one focus on teachers' um, tenure status, if there is even tenure. Um, unfortunately, not specifically in Sykeson, but I do remember this from way back when. Um, teachers, they've been in schools, they show up, kids sit in class and do whatever they want, and the teachers are pretty much protected in their job. I teach, being a teacher is probably one of the most thankless professions. You're not doing this to get rich. You are doing it because you care about education and students. And I wish we could just fill our schools 100% with teachers who are of that caliber. And I would love to work with teachers who are that committed to the students and their profession. Exactly, teacher tenure is one of us. Uh, a teacher has been in the position for uh, whatever amount of years the district requires. I have somewhat of a problem with the tenure on accounts is when a teacher is not doing their job, I think it's something perfect for a teacher that's doing what they're supposed to be doing and uh, they're for the children, but it has its advantages and disadvantages. So. Uh, it's good for a teacher that's doing, because teachers are important to me. Actually, a teacher is the most important person in a student's life other than their parents. You know, they spend a, a lot of time there, and a teacher's role is just so important. So in order for them to be able to be tenured into their job and have that opportunity, I do think that it's a great thing for the ones that are doing their job. But for teachers who are just there and allowing students to do anything, and I really just caring that's just there for the money, then I have a problem with that. Thank you. Thank you, Nithya. Kyle. Can you repeat the question? Sure. What is your understanding of and position on teacher tenure? So my understanding, of course, of a number of years, I don't know if it's five or seven years, uh, but that teachers can get tenured and I do believe that teachers uh, that uh, work hard deserve the reward of being tenured. My mom taught school for 30 years, uh, most of it in Morehouse. Uh, you know, it is a thankless job most of the time, but she still has students that come up to her and thank her for you know uh, the environment she created and what she did for them. Um, like you said, if if teachers aren't, and I believe. Some of this is probably advice. I mean, we write policy and stuff. But if teachers aren't committed or aren't doing their, you know, their job or are just showing up, there are paths and ways to, uh, you know, to uh, set that teacher, you know, to either correct the the action or stuff or or help them find another opportunity for what they want to do. Thank you, Chad. Um, yeah, I, mean, I think everybody's done a really great job of outlining what teacher tenure is. Um, I think it's a um, something to strive for for teachers to, um, you know, they put in long hours, a lot of time, and um, certainly gives them something to strive for, uh, gives them a little bit of protection. I don't think that is a, 
um, absolute surefire that we we tenure a teacher and then we lose control and they do what they want. Uh, I think that's a misconception perhaps of, of tenure. And so um, certainly anybody that's worth their salt put in the time, has made a difference in the lives of children. Um, I, I think they should be able to be comfortable um, and, and secure. Maybe that's a better job, not content or comfortable, but, but be secure in their position. And we ought, to, we ought to honor the work that they invest in our school district. So uh, I'm for teacher tenure. Thank you, Chad. Aaron. I'm definitely for teacher tenure. That's a hard job. I mean, you guys have, I have three kids at home. You guys see 100 every day. I'll, my hat's off to you. It's, it's tough. Um, you know, I think, I want to say it's five years in the state of Missouri. I don't know specifically what it is in our district, but if you are committed and uh, doing a good job, and you make it through that fifth year, absolutely, you should be tenured. Um, and, uh, you know, I think on the front end, when we hire teachers uh, as, as a board um, or as an administration, it's key to hire people that are gonna be passionate about children, uh, that love the subject that they're teaching, um, that are patient. Um, and if we do those things, you know, nine times out of 10, those teachers are gonna be with us for a long time. I mean, the benefits are great after retiring, right? It's why, I mean, the money's not, may not be perfect now, but it, in the long run, it, it pays off. Uh, and I, I definitely think that teachers should be granted tenure. Thank you, John. Well, this is something that's good for me because I love of my life, I retired from teaching and uh, being a tenured teacher in, in our area uh, is, is what they reach that at five years. Now, with a teacher, I, I believe that, that it's, it's not just a vocation, it's a calling. Because some of you all I've, I've met with, with my granddaughter and, and saw the, the effort and the things that you did and put forth to make her education better. And I think a teacher that really cares and it's performing correctly and doing what needs to be done. And there's proof of what she's doing. And I realize a lot of education has to come from home and quite frankly, a lot of them are not getting it home. So it makes a teacher's life really hard. And they should not be having to have a child evaluate them. I think that evaluation, because I saw one recently, where students were evaluating teachers. And quite frankly, that's wrong because what happens if they're mad? Uh, they don't like that teacher, and then all of a sudden that teacher gets bad marks. And I think we ought to really seriously not do something like that. But as far as tenure teacher goes, I believe they should have that right. I think they deserve that right. But there also has to be an avenue where a teacher that gets to be tenured decides she's not gonna listen or he's not gonna listen. We need to have an, an out, a way to be able to stop that, and I don't know what's in place for that because we haven't talked about but I think that a teacher that's tenured would be uh, ev everybody's dream. You don't go to high school and start as a freshman and think, oh, I'm graduating. No, you gotta do this process and do the time before you get out to get it. So I think that a teacher has put up with stuff for five years like that, they deserve to have tenure. Thank you. Good job. Stephanie. I do believe that teachers deserve to be tenured. Um, I did a little bit of public substitute teaching when I took a year off from work um, back in 07 and 08 uh, at Southeast Elementary and it takes a very special person to be a teacher um, and that wasn't my calling so uh, I'm, I'm with everybody else uh, I feel for teachers um, I have three children it's hard enough to manage three I can't imagine having to wake up every morning and go manage 30 or more in the classroom all day long. Um, I think our teachers here do a good job at it. Um, I do think they deserve, if they put the time in, they should be tenured. Um, they should have that, that safety net. Um, but I also feel that if there are problems with teachers, if we have parents or students complaining about a certain teacher that's not doing their job, 
Um, I believe it's up to the board to make a decision um, to get rid of a teacher. Um, that's, that's how I feel about it. So it's time for closing remarks, and we'll begin with Amethia. You get to begin our closing remarks, remarks for today. Well, what I would like to say is, um, as a school board candidate in Sykeston, it's important for me, for our children to be recognized as individuals. I believe that each child should have an opportunity to succeed. Um, I believe that our teachers should have an opportunity to have some leeway to work with each child, uh, depending on their needs. Um, I believe that our curriculum should be uh, where every child have an opportunity to, to succeed. As you know, I'm not in agreement with the Common Core math. I don't see where it helps. And I've, I've, I've researched uh, Common Core math, I've researched Eureka math, and the New York engagement. And I, I have, there were so many negative comments until I couldn't get to the positive comments to even really see what it was about. I've seen people who said they had different types of degrees and this was a problem for them. So as a school board member, I believe that it's important for us as, as school board members that are elected to make decisions based on what's best for the students. You know, not because of our own whatever we, we, we are getting on the school board for it. But to really be good representatives for our children, come with open minds and be compassionate. And that's something that I promise that if I'm elected as your school board member that I will do for our children. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as a school board candidate, I am very invested in our kids and all our kids. Uh, I'm also very invested in the community. I think it's very important uh, that we are successful, we're a successful community. Uh, over the course of, of my life outside of high school when I graduated here in college is I've been in uh, numerous roles in business, uh, uh, served over and, and put together budgets, uh, managed, worked on several committees, uh, and I believe some of those qualifications uh, are the things that, uh, that are necessary to be successful. So I would appreciate your vote. Hope everybody does come out and vote April 4th. So. Thank you. Chad. Um, I appreciate everybody uh, coming. I do want to thank the technology folks there that have made it, uh, uh, you know, accessible for me to join you all. Um, for me, I think you need to know that I'm not running on one issue or one agenda. Um, we're in an exciting time for our school district. In the next school board term, there's going to be lots of issues and decisions to be made. And uh, I think the most critical issue is that we we decide that we're going to do what's best for our children and what's best for our district. And so that's my heart. That's my intent. Um, I think again to uh, you know maybe stand on one issue um, is somewhat uh, narrow narrow perspective for us. Um, I know we talked a lot, a lot about issues tonight, curriculum and all that stuff, and I'll just say a curriculum. My John Luke loves Zern. Um, that's a great addition to some of our math curriculum that we've talked about tonight. So um, I appreciate the teachers doing that. Also would like to just say that um, I, I want to represent and, and hear people and, uh, again, move us in a positive direction to where we can look back on this season and talk about um, seeing some of the greatest growth not only in our facilities and our you know buildings but also in the growth of our children our test scores and uh, i just want to be a part of uh, making a difference in our community thank you Chad. Aaron. thanks everybody for coming out uh this was a good experience for myself and the, the fellow candidates um i really want to be elected to this board it's something that i've had on my mind for s several years um my dad did it my uh, mother was a substitute teacher and did her student teaching here. I graduated from here. They graduated from here. I've got kids in the system. Uh, Sykeson Bulldogs are in my blood. 
uh, I'm passionate about it. I want to see, I want to see this school get among the best in the state. Uh, I promise, if elected, to come prepared to each and every meeting. It's a waste of time if you don't. I know there's a lot of reading. I know there's a lot of uh, after hours when you're home from work, you're tired, but you need to read and be ready for that next week's meeting. I get that. Um, it's a time commitment that I'm willing to sacrifice time away from my family to try to serve three years on this board to make it better. Um, I would appreciate your vote on April 4th. If you have any questions for me, I'd be glad to try to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. John? I too would like to say thank you tonight for coming out. Uh, the questions uh, were important questions to all of us. And I want to be on the board, and I have pursued it before. And the situation is that for the first time in, in my remembrance of us ever having three people off at the same time on the board. So the dynamics of the board can change one way or another between all of us up here picking three of us to, to represent you all and the taxpayers and everybody and the citizens in our town. Number one, you got to have management ability. Number two, you got to have the care and concern in your heart. And you got to have the time to do that. And like we talked about earlier, I research everything, and I never make a vote that I haven't thoroughly researched it. And when there's a document comes up, I read every word on every page because one word can change that situation. And when we're looking at voting and people turning out and talking about the bond issue and I expect the crowd to come out a lot more than normal. But what I'm asking you all to do is vote for me. I'm a dad, I'm a grandpa, a great uncle, and I have the time to do this and I have the commitment to do this position. And having all, all that said, it's in my heart and desire to serve here, having my family been here, and, and understanding school commitment is really important and understanding the value of teaching. And, and I respect teachers because that is a very thankless job in a lot of times. And so I ask you for your vote, and I thank you. Thank you, John. Stephanie. Um, I, I just want to ask everybody that when you go on April 4th to vote, that you will think about what's important to you. Um, think about what kind of people that you want representing you on the board. I um, stand for what's right and good and fair, and I will be your voice. I will listen to you. I will listen to our students. I will listen to our community um, and bring that information to the board to be discussed. Um, I will be approachable, available, and um, I, I look forward to serving you as a board member if that should happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you everyone for coming out this afternoon. I hope to get your vote because I would like to be an ear and a voice between teachers and faculty, the administrators, the board, the parents, the community in general. It is important for this communication, these lines of communication, to be two, a two-way street. Parents need to be able to talk to the board and the faculty to, to let them know what their kids need. Teachers need to be able to, teach, to talk to the parents and the board to let them know what they need to teach the students. The um, board needs to be an ear between the community and the faculty to let them know what's being implemented, why it's being implemented, to implement what you want to have done. And I hope that I can be that voice. I hope I can be that ear for you. This is a very interesting dynamic where you as parents and teachers and taxpayers, we are all each other's bosses. We are all accountable to each other to, for the students. And that's a big responsibility for all of us. And I hope that you will trust me with that, um, with that position on April 4th. Thank you. All right, if you want to breathe now, it's <laughs> over. We want to thank Kyle Alcorn, Chad Bleese, Aaron Boyce, John Graham, Stephanie Poindexter, Alicia Wilder, and Anitha Williams for being here today, sharing your thoughts with everyone. 
as they look to uh, pick three of you on April 4th. And uh, let me tell you, um, it's easy to write a letter to the editor. It's easy to go to the coffee shop and complain. It's easy to put up a website or whatever you want to do to complain. But it's another thing to stand on, front of, on a stage, take the hard questions and try to answer them and convince people to vote for you. And so with that, they need a round of applause for that. And thank you to the uh, Teachers Association for uh, hosting this once again. Um, the community really appreciates the opportunity to see the candidates, and you offer that for them at your meeting. So we really appreciate that, and thanks for allowing me uh, to be here today. And as always, I like to say thank you to all the teachers. Um, what you do goes beyond math and science, and you know you touch lives uh, beyond what you teach. And so we really appreciate you, the teachers, for you for the school district and also for the staff and the faculty, thank you very much. And with that, we bid you a good day and good luck to our candidates and please vote on April 4th, thank you. <laughs>